In this video, I'm going to talk about finding um, the inter intervals of convergence for a power series. So the basic idea to find the interval of convergence is you simply use the ratio test to figure out where the ratio is smaller than one, and then you have to check your endpoints separately. So if you're not sure about the ratio test, I do some um, other videos here on YouTube that involve using the ratio test, but assuming you're familiar with that, let's do a problem here and let's find the interval of convergence for the series n equals 1 to infinity of x to the n over square root of n so we'll use the ratio test on this the limit as n goes to infinity everywhere there's an n we'll replace that with n plus 1 so in the denominator I'll get n plus 1 and then I'm going to multiply this by the reciprocal square root of n over x to the n and I want to figure out again where this ratio is smaller than 1 but first I'm going to simplify it down a little bit so I have the limit as n goes to infinity I've got x to the n plus 1 on top and only x to the n on the bottom that's going to leave me with an x to the first and then I could rewrite my square root of n over square root of n plus 1 as one big fraction all underneath the square root. Notice our limit here only depends on n. So what that means is I can simply factor out the x, but that comes out as the absolute value of x, and then we have the limit as n goes to infinity of square root of n over n plus 1. But underneath the radical, if you think about the limit as n goes to infinity of n over n plus 1, that simply, that simply equals 1. So all we're left with really is the absolute value of x and we want to figure out when that's smaller than 1. Well equivalently this will give us the equation that x has to be between negative 1 and positive 1. So what we have at this point is that um, if you take any number between negative 1 and positive 1 and plug it in for x, that series is going to converge. But now we have to check the endpoints separately. So I'll plug in negative 1. So I'm going to plug that back in here to my original series. I'll get the summation from n equals 1 to infinity of negative 1 raised to the n power over the square root of n. Well negative 1 to the n, this is now an alternating series and remember for an alternating series you just simply have to show that the stuff without the negative in it, you can think about that as being 1 over n, we have to show that the limit of that equals 0 and it certainly does, let me squeeze it all in there and then you also have to show that 1 over square root of n decreases which it absolutely does so this series is going to converge for x equals negative 1. We also have to check the value x equals positive 1, so let's squeeze that one in here. For x equals positive 1, we'll simply get the summation n equals 1 to infinity. Now I'm plugging that in for x, so I'll have 1 to the n, but 1 to any power is just 1. So I have 1 over square root of n, but I'm going to write that as n to the 1 half power. So this is not an alternating series anymore. This is now a p-series where the p-value of one-half, the p-value is one-half, but remember for a, a p-series to converge, this power has to be greater than one. So this series actually does not converge for the value x equals one. So in conclusion, we could say our interval of convergence is everything between negative one, because we justified that negative one here works, up to but not including positive one. So this would be your interval of convergence. Okay, so again you use the ratio test and then after that, it's a matter of checking the endpoints separately. So let's see if I can't squeeze one more in here on this video before I uh, run out of time. Suppose we have the series n equals 0 to infinity, n to the third 
times x minus 5 raised to the n power. So I'm going to do the exact same thing. I'm going to use the ratio test. So I have the limit as n goes to infinity. Everywhere there's an n, I replace it with n plus 1. And since it's not a fraction, I'm not going to multiply by the reciprocal. You simply divide by the original thing. So there's the original term, n cubed times x minus 5 to the n. And again, now I need to simplify this down a little bit. So I have the limit as n goes to infinity. I have n plus 1 x minus 5s in the numerator. I have only n of those in the denominator, so I'll be left with an x minus 5 term in the numerator. You can simply pull that one out front. And then I have an n plus 1 to the third over n to the third, and I'm going to write that as n plus 1 over n, all raised to the third power. Same thing as before, your limit only depends on n, so you can actually pull this x minus 5 out front as the absolute value of x minus 5. And then I'm left with the limit as n goes to infinity of n plus 1 over n, all raised to the third power. Um, if you think about the inside of this again, though, as n goes to infinity, n plus 1 over n is going to equal 1. You have 1 cubed. So just like in this last example, it looks like this limit's going to work out to be 1. Again, this certainly doesn't happen in general. Um, just these two problems have worked out this way. So I'm simply going to be left with x minus 5, and again, I, for this ratio to converge, we have to have this smaller than 1. Well, to solve this equation, I'll take x minus 5 and put that between negative 1 and positive 1. If I add 5 to the left side, I'm going to get that x should be between 4 and 6. So I know automatically that if I take any number between 4 and 6, this original series will converge. But now again, I have to go back and check the endpoints separately. So let me rewrite my original series. The original series was n cubed x minus 5 to the n power. n equals 0 to infinity. So now let's check our endpoints here separately. We'll check x equals 4. So if I plug in x equals 4, I'll get n equals 0 to infinity. It looks like I get n cubed. If I plug 4 in, I'm going to get negative 1 to the n. And this is an alternating series again. This tends to happen a lot on these problems. And we have to show that the limit as n goes to infinity of the remaining part, n cubed, we have to show that equals 0, and we have to show that the n to the cube terms decrease. But actually, neither one of these things happen. The limit as n goes to infinity of n cubed is not 0, so it certainly is not going to converge. Um, likewise, the n's aren't decreasing. n cubed doesn't decrease as n gets bigger. So x equals 4 is going to be a value at which it does not converge. And now I go back and do the same thing. I have to plug in x equals 6 into my original series. If I plug that in, I'm going to get n equals 0 to infinity. I'll get n cubed, and then I'll get 1 to the n when I plug 6 in. But 1 to the n is just 1. So really, this series works out to be n equals 0 to infinity of n cubed. And this series is simply going to diverge by the test for divergence. Remember, it says if you take whatever is inside of the series, it says if that stuff does not equal 0, that series also diverges. And certainly the limit as n goes to infinity of n cubed is not 0. So it looks like the only values that we'll get for our interval of convergence are going to be the values between 4 and 6. All right, so a couple quick examples here. Again, on all these power series problems, it seems like you almost exclusively use this ratio test. If you've forgotten the ratio test again, I've got some videos here on YouTube that, that um, go through that. If you have any questions, feel free to shoot me an email. If I can sort them out and make this stuff a little, a little bit clearer for you, I'll be happy to do so.